the pudding, and the pudding in this case is a football. Boom! Eat my goal! The goalie has got football pie all over his shirt. Welcome to this episode of the Down the Pool podcast. On this episode, I am joined by the man of the moment, I guess, uh, Massimo Ferran. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so, normally, before we get into the kind of the the nitty gritty, we kind of just do a couple of uh, quick questions just to kind of get you in the swing of things. So, which do you prefer, playing on grass or turf? I think for most, the preference is always grass, as long as you know it's relatively well cut. Uh, but for me, for sure, grass. So what are the, the two pitches, the two grass pitches in the CPL, like uh, Calgary and Halifax, are they really good pitches? Yeah, I'd say overall they're they're pretty good. They're pretty good pitches, and it's a breath of fresh air, you know, to play on them because the rest of the league is obviously turf. So um, it's obviously a little bit easier on the body, and it's just it's nice to get a true roll uh, from grass when it's a nice field. Yeah, easier to do slide tackles too, I would imagine. <laughs> exactly. Not too much for me, but for the other guys. <laughs> so... Uh... What would you prefer, a goal or an assist? Hmm, it's a good question. Um, I want to say recently in the past couple of years, I've probably transitioned into saying uh, goal. Um, but early on in my career, I, I would probably have answered that saying an assist. So definitely uh, joy for both. Um, but maybe more recently, <laughs> always like scoring, especially in front of our fans. It's, it's a cool feeling. So love it. And uh, what you do? What do you do on your uh, your days off? What's 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 your go-to place to kind of unwind? Um, yeah, you know, we obviously, it's uh, we have a pretty rigorous schedule um, between travel and and just trying to find a couple of days off. Um, but when we do, you know, a lot of the time hanging with the guys, um, I enjoy going. Haven't been yet, but I enjoy beaches and, and being able to, to get down. I know there's a couple of nice ones in the, just outside of Halifax. Uh, so, want to go to those i enjoy cooking and i enjoy some golf um haven't been golfing either but i know there's some very very nice courses around here so got to get out to a couple a couple of rounds hopefully in the next months when the weather's nice here yeah man you need to get out of your apartment and do some stuff huh jesus yeah i do i know i know <laughs> so you know just speaking of the travel schedule i, I kind of wish I, we were doing this interview last wednesday instead of today because obviously like we 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 had a bit of a nightmare finish on, on saturday but there was three games there where you were kind of went out west then back here and then back out to calgary and back home again so what what's it what's it been like for yourselves to kind of get over such a horrible schedule travel wise yeah it's obviously very difficult and you know you can't um fool your body uh yourself um in terms of knowing that that stuff is going to affect you a little bit, um, you know, especially the time change, that's a big part of it as well. And just your body clock for like a week, just getting completely thrown off. You know, you come back home and you just starting to adjust to the time change where you were, but now you're back. So, you know, trouble falling asleep on time, you know, staying up late, but obviously our schedule stays the same when we come home. So it's difficult. It's definitely difficult. Then obviously the obvious is just traveling that long and being in an airport and sitting down and layovers and all that is not ideal uh, when you have to go play uh, a match uh, at ideally a high level in, in the next day or, or coming days. So it's, it's been, you know, it's, it's very difficult. And unfortunately it's one of the downfalls of being kind of isolated out here on the East in terms of just teams in the league. Um, so it's a part that we probably struggle with more than more than others, but uh, nothing you know you can do to change it. So it's more of just doing your best to to get uh, to not let it affect you as much as you know it it could. Um, so yeah, but yeah, long long short answer. Um, it's tough. Oh, so you know you know like obviously we played on the Tuesday high energy game and then you've got the game on this saturday in, in calgary so what, what what's the schedule like for that like like did you leave straight after the pacific game or do you go the next day and then like what about when you get into calgary is it just like chill out or is it sessions what way does it kind of work for you yeah it's it's obviously you know tough because like you said when it's such a quick turnaround you have to uh try your best to find the time to recover um as well as prepare for the next match so 
Um, there, there is a little bit of an overlap. There has to be in order to be able to fit, you know, everything that is deemed essential um, in terms of recovery and preparation for the next game. So, you know, we left, uh, we had the next day at home um, after the Pacific game, um, but then we left, uh, so two days after that match. Um, and then, you know, the, the day after at home was more of a recovery day. Um, some of the guys who maybe didn't play as many minutes did a little bit of a light session, but again, you know, keeping wanting to keep those guys relatively fresh for the game, um, in Calgary. So most of our preparation came once we were in Calgary. Um, we trained in the morning, the day we left at home, um, which was good. We got a, we got a session in there that was mostly prep preparation then one more on the friday um in calgary then the game so yeah everything is is jammed it's very condensed your schedule you know like i said you kind of just have to pinpoint uh what you deem is necessary um to to get done and you don't have too much wiggle room to kind of go outside of that so yeah it's a very it's a, it's a tough it's a tough thing tough for the coaching staff you know to kind of do everything they want in such a condensed time frame but you have no choice so that's that's kind of how it looked for us so obviously like you, they always say that fo football is a funny game so you know dynamic scores in the 100 minute or whatever it was we we go to calgary and unfortunately for dan he scores in the 91st minute on the, the wrong end but what what's the mood in the around the team like uh, coming back from is it kind of like you just you put it all behind you and you're going to wait for the next home game or what was this? What was the mood that, uh, within the squad on the way back? Yeah, it was. It was. We were definitely you know frustrated um, by it. Obviously not with Dan because it's been amazing for us and uh, you know those things happen. I don't think uh, as long as you have a relatively long enough career, which knock on wood, I expect everything for him <laughs> to have. Uh, you're going to score an own goal or two, or things are going to happen like that. So you know it's almost in a certain way as much as it might hurt more it might be better for a team because it's not you know you can't really pinpoint a specific thing that we could have you know done so much better in, the, in that moment you know obviously there's things that we can look at in, in terms of the opportunity and how they got there and then you know that that you know set piece free kick at the end of the game all that but the specific action it's just unfortunate that like you said in sport that's how that's how things happen sometimes. So, you know, the mood was we thought we deserved to get a point from that game. You know, um, we had a couple of chances that we could have put away. You know, they had a couple of chances as well, but we felt like that that game deserved to be in a draw and, you know, to come away with one point. And, um, yeah, I think if, if that was the case, would have felt a little bit of a, of a better mood. You know, obviously, like you mentioned, and, and I was speaking, a very difficult trip, a road trip the past three games. Um, and, you know, even though having that one at home, um, the, the travel playing such a big part. So, you know, coming away from those three games with with four points wouldn't have been uh, the end of the world and maybe would have given us a little bit more of a boost, um, you know, getting now coming home. But it was a little bit frustrating because, you know, coming away with three um, over a three match period isn't when when you think about it like that, it doesn't sound as good. It's a little bit more frustrating as if you didn't get what you wanted from from that you know, that three game period. So, but overall, like, you know, uh, some of the losses that, that we spoke about this year, where uh, there was so much to, to analyze in terms of so much we could have done better and, you know, being more frustrated with how we performed, it wasn't so much that this way, you know, obviously again, there, there's things that we can do better, but that's, that's evident in, in every game, but, you know, we felt you never want to lose, but, um, you know, uh, more optimistic about this one thing you have about the other ones. I I, I promise I'll get on to uh, more positive stuff in a, in a second. <laughs> I, I had to be a Debbie Downer. I'm sorry. So you know, like uh, at the start of the season, we were we were having a lot of draws. Um, we really got over that hump. You know, like we we started winning, we won quite a few games at home now. You know, do you just think this is a hump we just need to get over with the with the road games, like the away trips that we just need to get that one win on the board and then we're going to kind of take off. You know, we, we've gained some important points on the road um, in some tough in some tough games against some tough opponents. And yeah, of course, we want to win and we believe they will come. Um, it's it's important that, you know, we, we kind of stay level-headed with it and not try to put too much pressure on ourselves, but also, you know, realize that playing at home 
uh, and playing away, the higher the level, the the more you feel the differences of those different environments and the difficulties of, you know, not having a fan, uh, fans supporting you, maybe giving that little burst of energy or extra boost um, and kind of having to create that on your own. But I think all of us have of a level where we understand that and, you know, we're confident that we can get over that hump. But like you said, of course, when you get a, a win um, in whether, you know, to first win anything, whether it was at home like us early in the year or now away, gives you that little extra boost and that little relief of saying, okay, you know, we've got the first one out of the way. Now, you know, maybe that little bit of extra pressure or or extra little bit of, you know, uh, worry of, of going into an away game kind of goes away a bit. So, yeah, for sure. I think, think we're in a good place and we're confident, but definitely when you get the first one, a little bit of that relief comes through just speaking of a home game like obviously we had that what, what what's it like uh when scoring a goal that deep into injury time and having six thousand crazy fans <laughs> joining in with everything with you what was what was the emotions like and uh what was it like from your point of view yeah it was, it was obviously um incredible i think those are moments that you kind of dream of um, whether it's you individually or just your team, but being in that environment to experience that uh, is, is, it was so cool. It was a little bit of a surreal moment um, because, you know, with the way that that game went a little bit of deja vu of thinking it might go the way the first one went. And um, you know, obviously a little bit of that frustration of knowing it maybe may end in a draw after, you know, again, you thought you deserved uh, the best from the match and all three points. Um, and yeah, for, for it to happen and, you know, leading up to it, knowing the potential of, you know, there was quite a, quite a gap between the, the time the penalty got called and then the time that Dan took it. So, you know, not wanting to think too far ahead, but knowing there's a possibility of, you know, this is the last kick of the match and a chance to get all three points at home. Um, it was, it was incredible. And obviously it was, uh, it went the way we wanted it to, which which was amazing. And yeah, like I said, to, to be able to celebrate like that and you saw the passion, the emotion on so many of the guys from Dan to me to Lorenzo and all, all the guys in the team and the staff, it was amazing. And I think those things go a long way in building uh, kind of the foundation for a team and then building that spirit and that bond together. So they're they're incredibly important and incredible to be a part of. So what was the game like last week with the... Uh the amount of fog like how how do you like you know especially with the game being delayed by an hour like you know you've, you've kind of built yourself up for it kind of seemed like it was a last minute thing to kind of push it back because of the weather and there was going to be a gap i guess of no more rain and, and, and whatever but you know just just being able to to see anybody it must have been like crazy huh yeah yeah to be to be fair i do think it was worse for those watching than it was for us on the field <laughs> um <laughs> For sure, you know, the, it definitely wasn't uh, the most clear um, that it could have been. But, you know, we at least were able to to see everything relatively uh, fine. But no, you know, kind of when you're in it and you're in the game, I don't think, at least for me, I really realized how foggy it was. It was until after that I kind of, you know, checked my surroundings and looked around that I really saw, wow, like, you know, it's 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 quite foggy and the fog is quite low. Like it's it's not high up in the sky. It's kind of hovering right right above the field. Um, but yeah, it was, again, it's just like, uh, I heard some people say, and some people speak about it just kind of made it feel like home, you know, Halifax type of weather. And, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was an interesting, uh, climate to play in, but, you know, at the end of the day, we'll with the way that it, it went down, we'll take it as long as, you know, we could, we can get a win. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, it, it produced like some of the some of the best uh football pictures I've seen. You know, like some of the some of the pictures that came out of it were incredible with just a it's true. It, was a, it was like a zombie apocalypse football match or something. You know what I mean? I know, <laughs> I know. I did see some of the pictures and you're right. It it looked pretty cool. <laughs> so um just just for yourself, obviously on a personal level, uh it's it's been like this season has kind of gone really well for you. You know, like you've been in a couple of teams of the week. It was quite a a bit of buzz around you too. I mean, like, you know, like it's, you know, especially in the city here, like we're kind of, people are like talk, commenting on how good you are. You must be really happy with how your season's going so far. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, I've, I've been happy with it. Uh, I was excited to come here. Obviously the connection with Patrice and Jordan prior, um, I think for me was, was a, was a big thing, not just in terms of coming. Cause you know, it's kind of the obvious thing I was always going to, 
want to follow those guys if they were in an environment that I thought was suitable for me. But it was just more so understanding the system, understanding the structure. And I think whenever you're a new player um, and you're coming into a system that you're familiar with, um, it's a big, big advantage because that stuff takes time. Um, it's not something that you can learn overnight. And to a certain extent, it's not some process that you can speed up uh, too much. Some of it is just, you know, you need that time. You need those games. You need the trainings to to get a grasp of it and to understand it. So to kind of be able to skip that because I was already so familiar with it was extremely helpful and gave me a little bit of a head start coming in. Um, and then, yeah, you know, in preseason, I actually picked up a little bit of an injury. So I, I didn't get to, you know, participate in too much of preseason. I think on the second or third day um, of, of having the whole team together, uh, I had a little injury that kept me out for, you know, three or four weeks. Um, so I actually went into the season without the, the longest preseason or, you know, I guess you would say the amount of preparation that ideally I would have liked to have. Um, but, you know, started off the season pretty strong. Um, you know, the Ottawa game, the first game of the season was actually my first, um, and only 90 minute game since, uh, preseason. I wasn't able to get a full match in, uh, based on my injury and, and, and that. Yeah. So, um, that part felt like I was catching up, you know, a little bit. I felt like in that first game in Ottawa, along with the, the odd weather that it was extremely hot there that day. Um, it took me a little bit of time to, to find my, my legs and, and kind of get into it. Um, but after that felt good and, you know, that, that road trip early on in the season, um, of being, you know, at, uh, playing at New York with Ottawa, um, and then playing Forge in Forge. Um, it was, it was kind of, I think maybe a blessing in disguise of having so many games in a short window because I missed a little bit of that preseason. I guess you could almost say it acted a little bit of, of a preseason of having so many games condensed. Um, and yeah, you know, the coaching staff did their best to manage my minutes and, and be able to have my legs as fresh as they could be. Um, but yeah, and then obviously, you know, it was unfortunate because I didn't really get to fully, um, enjoy the home opener as much as I would have liked because I actually injured my shoulder really early on in that game. It was in like the seventh or eighth minute that I injured my shoulder and I ended up playing the whole game, but, um, it, it was bugging me quite a bit and I really wasn't able to take in the atmosphere or anything. I was just focused on the injury the whole time because it was, it was a stinger and it was bugging me and, you know, it ended up keeping me out two weeks after that game. Um, so that was a little bit frustrating because like you said, I was coming in, felt good, was in pretty good form, had a pretty good start to the season. And then that kind of was a setback. And then, you know, the, the couple games after that, um, was a little bit frustrated after a month or so. Didn't feel like I was at that same, you know, level. And maybe it was part of the legs catching up again because, you know, it was tough to, to have a consecutive period of time where I was playing and training and, it was also frustrating from the standpoint of the injuries seemed to be just freak injuries of, you know, nothing like a pulled muscle or maybe something that you could go back to saying it was your preparation or, you know, your, your commitment or something that maybe, you know, you could say ah, it was on me if I maybe prepared better, wouldn't have you know done my hamstring or something. It was just these freak things that you couldn't really control and it could happen to anybody. And then, yeah, that period I was a little bit frustrated. I think the coaches sensed it. Some of my teammates sensed it. But eventually, kind of just mentally reset, you know, coaches helped me out with it again. Because, again, the, one of the good things and bad things is that, you know, knowing Patrice for so long and Jordan for so long, they obviously know me very well. And it's hard to hide things from them that maybe <laughs> the other coaches won't pick it up right away. Uh, they, they're they able to point it out relatively easy. Um, so, yeah. And then that kind of took us till just after the mini break we got after the York game in New York and we tied 2-2 we had a couple days because of the gap between our games to kind of just uh do our own thing for for the first time in, in the very condensed beginning of the season and we had three or four days to just ourselves with no trainings or no nothing it was a little bit of like a I guess you could say mid-season break and I think that kind of helped me kind of helped me just refresh and say you know going into it let me kind of just start over um you know injuries behind me now feeling good and yeah, and that kind of, that was the, um, that would have been the Forge game. Uh, the Forge game at home, um, the one we just talked about would have been that first game after our break and stuff. And again, I think I felt a little more rejuvenated, a little bit better in a 
you know, mentally having more confidence and just kind of going out and, and playing more free. And ever since then, I feel like, you know, I picked up some momentum and knock on wood, stay healthy, but I feel like, you know, I'm on a good trajectory now. And then the past couple of weeks have been more of what I expected myself and, you know, what I'm, I want to say I'm, I'm used to and, and what I hope to be for, for this team and even more. So yeah, that's a little bit of the story, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now in a good place and I'm happy. I'm excited for the games coming up for sure. So I, I, I noticed that injury that you got on your shoulder and you I, I saw that you played on with it. And I think you played a bit of the next game. I think you might have gone off it or something. So is that, is that you like trying to be like, like not a hero, but like to kind of say like, you know, like I'm okay to play on when really you should be. Cause I feel like that's a, there's an adrenaline thing. And there's also a thing that you don't want to give up your spot to somebody else. So it, it's, was there a bit of that to it? Um, yeah, you know, I obviously you want to get back and play as soon as you can. Um, we obviously got great doctors, physios here that uh, will be open and honest with you and, and speak to you about, you know, your availability and whether it makes sense. And obviously there's an understanding that as a as an athlete, I think in any sport, you can't always expect to be fully 100 percent all the time. There's going to be moments and, and periods where you might have to play uh, with a little knock or something. Um, but you know, I wanted to be back sooner, but I was also honest with them and myself. And I knew that, you know, I couldn't really swing that arm. I couldn't do uh, what I wanted to do. And a couple of times in training when I, you know, uh, kind of tried to just let loose and, and play as if I was fine. I had a couple moments where I, I felt some pain that um, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be tolerable in a game to kind of just shake off and continue, you know, really stung me and stuff. So I took my time with it. And unfortunately, you know, I guess good and bad. Good was I could come back um, when it was still somewhat uncomfortable. Um, but it was something that they said, you know, might linger for a month or even longer um, where it's not going to affect you negatively, but you might just feel it in certain movements when you do this or that, because it takes quite a bit of time to settle down. So, you know, once they told me that even if you feel it, you're not going to make it worse, that was the part I think when, you know, mentally as again, as an athlete, you can kind of relax and just say, okay, trust your body now to just go out and do what you want. Um, but yeah, then speaking to the team, you know, obviously you want to help the team in any way. I don't think too much. I was in a rush to get back to, to gain my spot or my spot. I think, you know, you can only be as good as you can be when you feel good. You know, it's tough to, to get the best out of yourself and for others to see the best of you when, you got an injury or something affecting you. Um, so yeah, you know, that part was just when I do come back and I'm do healthy and I am healthy uh, to work my best in training, do my best and then just earn the the trust of the the staff and my teammates again. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the process of that. But obviously you, when it, when it goes on a little bit longer than maybe you initially expected, it gets frustrating, but <laughs> at the end of the day, there's nothing you can do. You just want to feel good. So, you, you know, you, you kind of mentioned there, uh your relationship with patrice and, and and jordan too so you know you've been you've been around them i think since like 2015 2016 maybe so what what is yeah. it about patrice's coaching style that makes you want to like i'm sure you had a bunch of offers because you were the league one mvp last year so i'm sure you had a bunch of offers around the league so what made you want to follow him to halifax um yeah obviously i've known him for for quite a while um and then you know pre-college and obviously him being, being a catalyst to the one who opened my eyes and helped me um to the college experience of, of going and playing in, in um, the ncaa and, and all those things so i've kind of he's seen me progress and i've seen him progress as a coach of having more of a role at bond and and you know becoming the first he was the assistant while i was there with the league one team um, and then obviously over the years transitioned into the head coaching spot. And yeah, I think he's got a very unique uh, style, um, which, which is, uh, I think a good thing. And it might take you a little bit of time to understand him as a person, uh, his sense of humor, um, the way he is. Um, but I don't think you'll ever find it hard to, to see the passion that he has for the game and the passion that he has to help, you know, younger players, um progress in their careers and give them a platform to to show their best so you know obviously i i saw what he could do for me um in terms of the effect that he had on my career and helping me develop um so and again like i said believing and trusting in the system and what he was doing 
um, and with having experience in it, knowing that it could, you know, be successful for me, it was, it was obviously an easy decision and, uh, yeah, one that I would make a hundred times over. It, so it, it's been, it's been good. And of course it's been as I expected. I didn't expect it to knowing him as a person. I never expected him to come in here and, and throw a complete 180 at me and do something that I've never seen before. It's been you know, in a good way. What I've expected. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, I, I, I said like so sometimes I sit up in the, the press area and I can kind of see down the touchline and I definitely see the passion that him and Jordan have for the game. And uh, I'm sure the assistant or the fourth official has heard their passion quite a bit, too. So, <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, a handful. <laughs> so where where do you where do you fit into Patrice's system? Like, what does he expect from you? Like, you know, you kind of you're kind of almost like a hybrid between an attack and midfielder and attacker. Because sometimes you kind of play, um, you know, when we don't have the ball, you're expected to kind of track back, and when we're coming forward, you're expected almost to be a false nine slash striker. So, uh, what what's expected of you within the system that like uh with, with Patrice? Yeah, I, I think, you know, everybody's got their role on the team and kind of the responsibilities that in in um, the identity that we have as a team, it, it's kind of understood of, of what your responsibility is. Specifically for me, um, I think it goes back to when I first began with Patrice. And I think we figured out soon that, you know, I was best – um and most comfortable on the field when I had a little bit of of freedom to kind of read the game and then adjust and adapt based on what I saw and and it was obviously um I I guess you could say I compliment Patrice for being able to give me that freedom because not all coaches do um you know some prefer a more structured approach to where they don't you know analyze maybe those things as much and they more so say okay you're playing in this position so as a result you're responsible for this this and this and if you change positions then your responsibilities become this this and this but there's not too much freedom but you know I I guess you can say when I first started with him I played as a as a left winger who would invert almost centrally um, at times so it was it was almost a combination of exactly what you just said of kind of yeah my starting point and my starting position may have been on the left but I had the freedom to kind of play more centrally and over the years um you know uh that that's kind of stayed relatively consistent last year you know with the league one team I was more primarily on the left but again you know he gives me the freedom to to come inside and and to kind of see a situation and uh, give me the freedom to act upon it. And he does that with, with not just me, you know, it, it's many of the guys that that's, that's what I mean by part of his style is he understands that the game isn't meant to be structured um, in his eyes. And I don't think it should be either. So he trusts you in, especially in the attacking third to, you know, look for things that we train and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's, it's up to you to make your decision and, and to, to see what you think is best uh, suited in that situation. So um, I'm open to playing both. Um, you know, like I said, I maybe have a little bit more experience playing out on the left. Um, but I wouldn't say it's a brand new uh, position to me playing as like a false nine a little bit, something again that I've done with him before. So I understand the responsibilities and, and what he expects of me, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of both and a couple little tweaks that, uh, are different in the, in those positions, but generally, you know, it's, um, can you produce and can you be, dangerous and creative as an attacking player no matter where you line up i i, I think just with the freedom thing i, I mean the wonders like struggled quite a bit with obviously scoring goals last year and the year before and just having people who will take the chance of like shooting from outside the box and i think that with the fact that you aiden Downs especially as well has that freedom we get goals like we did against forge and the shot that hit the post against calgary so you know it's kind of it's kind of cool that you have that freedom and but you've also got your other responsibilities but I, I think we wouldn't have seen a goal like that if you weren't allowed to have that freedom so it's kind of cool he gives that to you absolutely no i agree i think it's a big part especially for an attacking player it's kind of nice yeah um so you know um i, I was kind of just did a tiny little bit of research that i always do for the show so i know your dad played for for maryland and he's i think he still has a a record down there for assists or something like that. So was it a football madhouse growing up? And, uh, 
you know, how much of your style kind of comes from what your dad is like? Um, yeah, I would say for sure. I have a big um, football background in my family. You know, both my parents um, are Italian and, and my grandparents were all born and raised in Italy and then came to Canada. So, you know, the the Italian culture and I would like to say the European culture of being a, a football fanatic is definitely true in my family. And I grew up, <laughs> you know, watching my favorite team is, is uh, Milan and uh, I grew up watching them all the time and uh, watching the Serie A and obviously a big fan of the Italian national team. So it kind of was across my whole family that, that, you know, I was put in football right away um, from as, as little as I can remember. Um, so it was, it was, yeah, it, it's been in my blood since. And in terms of the style, I think it's actually a big reason of how I see the game today um, has to do with my dad and, and also, you know, some of the coaches that I was lucky enough to have when I was really young. I had a coach from Argentina. Um, his name was Hector Marinado. And uh, he played at the top division in Argentina. And he, I, you know, I was too young to understand the tactical side of things in sport. I was still just playing at that age. just was six, seven, eight years old. Um, and it was him that began to teach me the the style of play, you know, that, that he saw the game um, through. And it was a lot of, uh, you know, possession-based football that was entertaining and and being able to uh, play at a fast pace. But at the same time, you know, understanding, you know, one of the first things I'll always remember him him saying to me was that the game is not meant to be played at 100 miles an hour. And, you know, there would be a bunch of times in our training that you'd have kids running around all over the place. <laughs> and he would And he would stop. And uh, say, like, where are you running? Why are you running? And, you know, at that age, you used to always think that running and the more running you do is beneficial. And he kind of would teach us that to run for the sake of running is is not beneficial. And, you know, you need to know when to go slow, when to go fast. And it just kind of began to create my whole ideology of how I saw the game and how I wanted to play it and what I thought was the most fun to play. And ever since, you know, I've kind of, I've never changed. I've never seen a system that I say, oh, I'd rather play in a system like that. Um, and it's a little bit funny because with my Italian heritage and my culture, especially growing up, uh, they didn't always play that style of play. It was more, <laughs> you know, sit back, defend uh, extremely well, and then hit you on the counter, score one. And so as much as I was a fan of them, um, I wouldn't say that their style of play was how I would I – would, uh, choose to play. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the long story. And then my dad, obviously an important point that I left out there, he actually coached my dad when he was younger as well. So he, um, that was how the connection came for him to coach our team when I was really young, because my dad already had a relationship with him. So he was kind of able to coach both of us. Um, and I, he, you know, my dad had him when he was a little bit younger than I had him when he was a little bit older. So, uh, I think he's the person who, allowed us to to see the game the way we do now. And and then I had, you know, both him and my dad um, growing up kind of shape how I saw it. That is awesome. I love that the, the, he coached both you and your dad. It's a great little connection, isn't it? Um, so, you know, just, just I know you mentioned there that you uh, were down, at, you were part of the NCAA, you were with Alabama, I think, and also Syracuse. I kind of just wondered, like, why, why did you switch schools? Like, was it, did Syracuse like give you an offer you couldn't refuse kind of thing or like what, what, what why was it the change because they're both ncaa schools right they are they are they're both ncaa schools and i really enjoyed my time at both to be honest with you and it was difficult to leave alabama um uab because i really did enjoy my time there created a lot of really good friendships a lot of really good friends I was enjoying the football i can't give you a good reason why i left um the only thing is within the ncaa um, there's different conferences and some conferences have a little bit on paper, I guess you could say a little more pedigree than the others and have a little bit more, um, maybe you could say trust within the, the scouting uh, scope with MLS teams and stuff. So Syracuse played in the ACC, which was known to be, you know, the best, if not one of the best conferences in the league where a lot of the guys drafted every year came from that conference and, you know, it was seen to be the most competitive. Um, and there's been, you know, obviously, some really good players that played there. You know, I was lucky enough to play with Tejon, uh, Kamal, uh, Ryan Raposo, 
um, Alistair at Vaughn, but he also was playing in the same conference at a different school. Um, so it created, and there's obviously many other ones now within the USL, uh, MLS, there's a lot. So it, it, that was, that was the main reason and had nothing to do with, you know, wanting a change of scenery, just thinking that, you know, if you did well, maybe you'd have a couple more eyes on you, um, in a conference like that, than than at UAB. Um, so that was the main reason, reason I switched and, uh, yeah, the, it, it wasn't anything personal or bad. And I, I, I'm happy that I did it. You know, Syracuse is obviously a, a great school, great for that, their athletics and their program. Um, and I really did think, you know, playing against a, a high quality opposition uh, prepared me for the next level um, uh, as best as it could. That's a, that's a really great reason. I, I I was just being nosy, basically. That's all it was. Yeah, so, no, of course. <laughs> so you, you know, you, you kind of mentioned there that like once you, you know, you you were the the schools, the NCAA, you're kind of like get scouted by MLS and all that kind of stuff. And you were part of DC United's system for, for a while. You were with their reserve team, I guess it Luden or Loudon, I'm not too sure how it's pronounced. Um, and then I think you had one friendly game with DC United. So what was it like being around that sort of uh because that was obviously your first steps into prof- into professional football. So what was it like being within that organization? Is it like a kind of a carrot and stick thing where you just you can see the MLS was kind of being dangled in front of you like a little bit. And, you know, uh, I guess that's where you kind of want to end up again eventually. Right. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, I think for sure, many people, many players who choose to play for um, a reserve team with an MLS team know that, you know, I think the main goal is to impress and then be able to get a chance with the first team. Um, So for sure, that was my reasoning going into it. And, you know, I had a couple uh, reserve teams uh, from the, around the MLS reach out, um, but again, funny, you know, the, the world of sport and connections at the time the the general manager of, uh, DC United was actually, um, a Maryland boy as well and went to school with my dad and they played together in Maryland. Um, so, and they maintained a good friendship after, uh, for many, many years. So, you know, they, uh, uh once, you know, they reached out and also, knew the the relationship that uh, my dad had with him and kind of growing up because of that relationship um always followed DC United a little bit more than other teams in the MLS because you know I knew my dad was good friends with with the GM and when they would go play TFC I'd go sit in the press box with him and some of the reserve players who maybe traveled but weren't playing so you know they they were good friends they weren't just you know people who who played together at at Maryland and then you know, haven't spoke uh they speak quite often and, and yeah so that that was a main reason kind of um, you know, maybe gave them a little bit uh more of a reason for me to to play with that team. And yeah, to be honest with you, it was good. It was difficult because it was it was the year of COVID. Um, when I signed, um, the world was normal, and then within three months, it it turned on its head, and it was it was crazy. So, um, it, it was it was difficult because a lot changed. You know, I think everybody knows that within the world, with the way things were with with how the league operated and, and kind of how they did get creative with how things were going to be run and all of that. Um, it, it was, it was different, but at the same time I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed um, playing with them. You know, I a little bit unfortunate because again, with the, with the COVID situation stuff, I was, was actually invited to, to kind of finish the season with DC United my first year there. Um, I did well with them, but we had a little bit of a, of a COVID outbreak on the, on the, usl team um i was one of them asymptomatic didn't know but because of that uh, unfortunately they kind of obviously shut it down they didn't want me to to have to do a full quarantine and not play and not train and then come in and they were all also towards the end of their season um so unfortunately that opportunity didn't come to uh fruition which was a little bit frustrating because like you know we spoke about that's that's the reason you're there those are the reasons that you're looking for those opportunities and you know who knows where that could have led to in terms of, you know, being able to to train with them every day and, and be with them for the last couple months of their season of, you know, maybe getting a contract there next year or something like that. So a um, little bit of a sour taste in terms of how it ended because, you know, part of me is proud and happy that, you know, I, I was invited to that um, and would have had that opportunity. 
Uh, but part of you was frustrated because it was something that was out of your control and not something that you, you know, I had any control over. I could have done any, any differently, um, which was, yeah, which was the frustrating part, but you know, that was, that was that. And, and I enjoyed it. It was a good experience to be in a professional environment and also to have um, a, uh, like a parent club um, at an MLS level. And yeah, like you said, I got to play in that one match with them um, in kind of like a friendly series that they were doing. Ended up scoring that game. We won one nothing, which was a pretty surreal moment to score at Audi Field because um, we played at their home stadium, of course. Um, so yeah, that was that was cool. But yeah, that's a little bit of the story of my time out in uh, in Loudon there in Virginia with with DC. So it was good. It was a good experience. The, the good thing is, like I mean, like the way that you're playing right now, and they're kind of as I mentioned earlier on the buzz about it, like like you're playing at such a, a good level it's not gonna be too long until people start noticing right and the good thing about the, the cpl is that it's a really good shop window for uh the bigger clubs too as we've seen so many players kind of move on to uh to uh to kind of i wouldn't say better leagues but like bigger bigger leagues so you know you'll i think you'll have that opportunity again absolutely yeah thank you i hope so that's the, the goal the the last question i ask everybody that comes on the show you're going to play in a five-a-side tournament from the players you've played with, who makes your team? Oh, well, it's just the guys that I've played with. That's a good yep. question. So five aside team. Yeah, this is good. I got a lot of a lot of guys going through my head right now. <laughs> uh, youth days to not. Um, one's going to be a former, uh, a current CPL player. I'm not sure if you guys know, but me and Tristan Borges are quite good friends. We played youth growing up together on Forge. Um, and we used to always love playing together because I think he also had a very similar style and saw the game through a similar lens than I did. So um, I'd like to play with him. Uh, he'd be one of the guys I'd pick. Um, let me see who else. Um, I guess you could say good to have a, a, a Dane St. Clair in that. Nice. I like that. Um, yeah. I think I'd have to go Tejon, of course. Yeah, I'm I'm lucky. I got some pretty good players to to pick <laughs> pick from. Again, I think, yeah, I, I want to say Alistair. He might give me he might give me some crap because I'm gonna say that I'm not sure five aside is is his greatest. Uh, He's a strength. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say <laughs> Alistair, and um, then maybe what's that? That's that's four. That's four. Yeah. Myself. You can include and, yourself uh, if you want to. Yeah, I got to play with those guys. I got to play with those guys. So I'll give myself. And then the fifth one would probably be um, Ryan Raposo. He's a little fireball. Uh, he'd probably get us in some fights, but he'd probably win us some games too. So that'd be my five-a-side team. That's a pretty solid team. I, I love the fact that uh, treble winner Alistair Johnson is struggling to get in there. So <laughs> Yeah, if he hears this, he'll probably send me a little message and say, what are you saying about me? But I, it's okay. I'm used to it for him. I love it, man. It's been it's been fantastic talking to you. Um, like your 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 story is is incredible. Um, where you you can tell the city's like really taken to you. Like I'm sure you've seen the uh, mighty Massimo banner, yeah, which is incredible. incredible. You know, so we're we're really lucky to have you here. And uh, yeah, man. Um, looking forward to seeing you playing on Saturday. Absolutely appreciate it, Anthony. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Had some fun. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll chat soon. Cheers, mate. See you soon.